morning. It has been way too long since we visited. Way too long. Good morning, Barbara. So I'm here with Alice. My daughter Alice. And we're at barn three. And this is the first time that these weanlands have been turned out of barn three. Hello, Sandy, Alexandra. Nice to be back talking to you guys. So this our crew yesterday, we shared, Alice shared about, hello, Penelope, good morning, everybody. It's been way too long. Hello, Wilma, Denise. It's great to see everybody again. Terry. So we're going to share today just about, um, and there's our Alice. Good morning. That's our Alice. And there is Oscar. We're going to go give Oscar some carrots. He's going to wander over he's here because he's a, he's, coming over. he's a curious sort. And it's now. great to see everybody again. It's been, I know it's been a long time. Um, we'll share with you just some of the things that we've had going on. It's been all been great. Price and Doc are over in Newmarket right now at the December sales, the Tattersall's December sales. This guy has missed you as well because whenever y'all are around, he gets carrots. <laughs> Don't you? You get carrots. Say hello to everybody, Oscar. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you. What about you, he says? <laughs> what about you? Yeah, you got anything? There's a great photo. We'll share it on Instagram, Alice. Will you share the one with Jack and, and Oscar? Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's a great photo with Jack and Oscar. That Jack is, Alice and Peter have two children. Their oldest is Mary Price, who's five, and Jack, who's three. And there's a photo with Jack and Oscar. We use, and my apologies on the wind. We've got wind because, you know, we've been out of out a routine of sharing with you guys and we forgot to get any kind of a cover. Hello Alexandra, there you are. Sweet Alexandra came through with her friends. Many of y'all have come through. And, um, and we are great to, to have you come through. Good for you, Michelle. I hope you pop through here. Michelle's in my old Kentucky home. Hello, Cheryl. Good morning, Liz. Thank you so much for recommending Mill Ridge. Guys, we're gonna have 6,000 visitors come through Mill Ridge this year, which is amazing. When we dreamt up horse country, we didn't know what to expect. But uh, for us to have 6,000 people experience this, just extraordinary. You have a, an Oscar performance Philly. That's great. So great. So this is Oscar performance as I'm so indicating. And my name is Heedley. And you're for the first time, if you're watching, you're you're at Mill Ridge Farm in Lexington, Kentucky, um, where we've been sharing virtual tours really since COVID times. And um, we've got such a loyal following of people. We've been out of the routine because it's just frankly, we've just been very busy with um, the sales and things, but we're gonna get back into a routine and we look forward to sharing uh, with yourselves on a more frequent basis, you know, at least once a month kind of a thing. Our son Price and Beth and their two children, George and Caroline, 
um, are part of our family, and my wife Nancy, um, all part of our family. And then it's extended beyond that, but um, Price is in New Market, as I was mentioning. Um, there's a sale over there um, in New Market, England, and we've been going there since Survivor days, um, which was the horse that mom bred that won the English Derby in 1968 and really allowed us to be a big part of of all of England racing and things, you know. They will eat the leaves. They'll eat whatever they want to eat. And, um, yeah. So I started to say, we're here at what we call Barn 3. And yesterday, Alice shared, there go our guys. They're getting ready to turn out the Weanlands. And <clears throat> when I speak of that, what we're referring to is Oscar, we'll see you later, okay? You take care of yourself. He's not too bothered, is he? So, so exciting because this year, Oscar's offspring will be racing for the first time, this year being 2022. He currently has yearlings that have started their early training, generally down in Ocala and things. And, um,. They're starting their early training, and and uh, they'll be racing this year. He's getting ready to scratch his fanny. You see that? <laughs> Question on brown car. Brown car. Oh, so brown car. He's a shell of himself. He's a shell of himself. Well put. Brown car, after 50 years, needed to have an engine mm, redo. And y'all know about all those boats that are stuck out there in L.A. with parts and toys and furniture and everything. Like well, I think some brown cars parts are part of that as well. Anyway, it's been rather lengthy. But, you know, when you're talking about a, a car with a vintage 1971, time is on your side. And we're really not in any rush, especially as the winter comes. So, brown car, the shell is in our garage. The engine is at Stuttgart Motors, gonna be rebuilt. So here we are at barn three. Isn't it fantastic? So a little, little tease of history. This was the only barn, along with the two stallion barns, when mom inherited this land upon her father's death in 1962 Hal Price Heatley so this was the only barn he was in the process of building this barn and and things to be able to allow her to have a farm to grow out her love of the horse um, and then he died earlier than expected um, but she did carry on with that that mission and that dream of building out Mill Ridge. And at the time, there wasn't any of this, um, any of the fields laid out, any of the roads laid out. There's a barn down there. See that big black mass? That's a tobacco barn, old tobacco barn. And in fact, that is where Sir Ivor was born, in that barn. And it's exciting because of dear friend of ours, Scott Hyder, has a filly that he raced called Zofel, who was just second in the grade one over the weekend. And she just arrived last night, and I shared with him this morning um, her location. And uh, it's where Sir Ivor was born as well. So she's there. She's going to be, actually the blacksmith's just gone to, to remove her hind shoes. And she's going to be turned out. So that's the house that mom built uh, when her father died and where we were raised. It's just the very back of it. You can barely see it. But for those that have been here to Mill Ridge and been on our tours, you have a chance to, to you know where we are. Um, but that was all the start of it. Sir Ivor was actually born there, as I mentioned. And he was, at the time that he was born, we had a, a great... Uh, night watchman slash folding man called Gene Bergen and mom would attend all the wet, all the foldings 
This was in 1965. And he was stuck at the hips, meaning that she, the mare had grown tired, the big foal, and just couldn't push anymore. She, Mom ran up and grabbed Reynolds out of bed, who was not very happy about that, came down and pulled one, made one big massive pull, and out came Survivor. And that was the beginning of it. Quite something. Because with Survivor, who was sold at Keeneland, as a yearling for 42,000 to Raymond Guest via Bull Hancock, who was really representing Raymond Guest. He was sent to Vincent O'Brien, um, and that was where Coolmore, John Magner, uh, was racing and observed that the American bred was likely to become the dominant breed for the next next generation because of the speed that they were interjecting through the American bread and um, so Vincent O'Brien trained survivor it's he's not related to Aiden O'Brien even though it's the same facility Bally Bally Doyle um, but he trained survivor ridden by Lester Pigott the great 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 Lester Pigott and he was champion two-year-old in England. And then as a three-year-old, he won the Epsom Derby. And that really cemented uh, what John Magner believed. Here goes our team. All on the go. Here they come, there they go. So here we are. This is one of the two stallion barns that were also constructed. And at the time, this is again, 1962, granddaddy dies, mom starts developing it on further. These two barns, this was a two stall stallion barn. You can see that was where another stall door was like that. And mom took the middle out and made it into a single stall stallion barn. We've had the great diocese stand here who was a champion in 1982. He left an impact on the breed. And Johar, who was a son of Gone West, who we stood here as well. Uh, my brother Reynolds and mom were instrumental in getting diocese here and Dr. Chandler um, and Gone West. Reynolds played an amazing role in getting Gone West to stand here. And he really is a breed shaping stallion. And now Oscar Performance, who's going to be the breed shaping stallion. But this is where this is where Oscar's sweet top of the tree. Everything. This is his. This is where Oscar lives. And then we added these additional stallion barns. That's where the stallion of Nice was. And this is our breeding shed. And my apologies, y'all are likely sending all sorts of messages. Y'all know, since with me, I don't really read them, and I, my apologies. Hannah's on it. Is Hannah on it? She's on it. Ah. We got everybody today. Ah. Hannah is working it, apparently, which is really helpful. I rely on team, I promise you. Because y'all, if you've been with me long enough, you know I get, can get very frustrated when this thing, this here video messes up on me because it's out of my element as far as knowledge goes. And Alice is a great, great, great help, amongst other things that she's a great help with. So as y'all might know, Alice is named after our mother, Alice Chandler, and uh, whom we lost this past April. But what an extraordinary life she lived of 95 years. This is, for those who've been here, this is our breeding shed where we start all of our, our horse country tours. And um, these are the stall doors of Gone West and of Diocese. So as mom grew out Mill Ridge, 
what made us who we were was not just that she was Hal Price Heatley's daughter who was extraordinary in his own right breeding and racing with this quote Beaumont land we're on Beaumont land but she continued it on, continued it on and just since 2000 we've bred or raised as a result of our extraordinary clients 36 grade one winners and these are all the list of the grade one winners starting with the great Spain who was trained by Wayne Lucas for thoroughbred corp earned over four million dollars and then look there point given who was horse of the year extraordinary so these are all the and when you come visit if you come visit or those that have visited you know we share the history but more fun we go out on the farm and we feed carrots to our horses our full our mares it was always a joke because early on Janie and Price and I started the tours before we had the great fortune of having Hannah lead it all now Hannah and Tia but led by Hannah offers all of our tours and shares and she's exceptional and we're, she's dedicated full time to just that touring who would have thought it dedicating somebody full time to touring but when you have 6,000 people come through you can justify such a thing and that's what we're trying to do we're really trying to offer experiences to allow the industry to grow like that um, and we're the first to really dedicate somebody full time to it and Hannah is just such a special special person for sharing everybody says wow Hannah is great and Tia is great and we say thank you so much so see where we are y'all see these sycamore trees mm. and it's a gray day you know but it doesn't feel like it does it so fine so pup I'm gonna flip it around here well, yeah where I can say hello to people ah. right there All right uh oh ha your finger my finger was whoa the further the better good morning good morning to everybody look where we are see all that Isn't it the best but it's always good to put a face to a voice and I'm Heatley I welcome you Alice is laughing at me isn't it terrible to have her have her have to put up with me hold on that's better right there <laughs> anyway we're going to kind of wander this way for a little bit we're going to tell you about about what occurred yesterday so a reminder we are a nursery mill ridge is a nursery we now have about 900 acres thanks to the, our acquisition which is part of why we've been so busy of 288 acres adjoining mill ridge and we are walking right towards it it is i mean it is connected it is part of Beaumont, the historic Beaumont farm of Hal Price Heatley, which was known for raising these extraordinary horses. And yes, it is the land, and yes, it is the opportunity of our clientele who provide us wonderful mares. And yes, it is positioning ourselves to get lucky. That's what we do. So this is the second stallion bar. And look at those two names. Gone West, Breed Shaping. You see him in m many, many, many pedigrees now. Son of Mr. Prospector. Again, Reynolds did an amazing job. We had mares for uh, Hickory, Hickory Tree, 
uh, the Mills family. And they had sent all their stallions to Claiborne, which was a natural thing to do because of the great Claiborne farm. But Reynolds suggested to Mr. Mills that, you know, if he was in Mill Ridge, he would have a chance to be, to stand out. Uh, we had diocese and he was very popular and gone west would really suit and complement diocese because we only had the two horses. And so Mr. Mills agreed. And um, my goodness, one of those. So there's gone west and then keep up who's a, a son of our great race filly called Keeper Hill, who we don't race many horses, uh, but we happen to keep Keeper Hill because she was from the great Fapiano family. Suge McGahee owned a quarter of her and our dear, dear, dear friend Toliato, Audrey Otto, Jam Limited owned a quarter of her. Millridge owned a quarter and there were uh, two other ladies who owned a quarter and they wanted out when we offered her for sale as a two-year-old, uh, consigned by Kip Elzer. And, um, and so at that time, um, totally bought out uh, that partnership and Dr. Chandler was already in as well. So we raced Keep Up. Um, the story behind him was that, you know, you never know what happens with these horses because they are fragile, because it's just they run and they're just out in nature. Anyway, one morning he came in and he had fractured his knee. And the great surgeon, Dr. Bob Hunt, managed to put probably three screws in. He was stalled for probably nine months and um, never thought he'd, he had a 10% chance to live, much, much less race. Well, eventually he raced, earned over $300,000, a grade three winner. And we tried him at stud. He was a son of unbridled song. And he wasn't so successful as a stallion. Um, but um, it was worth a try. Part of our team. Um, but he's a favorite. And he now stands down in Texas with a dear, dear friend of ourselves. who's an Oscar performance shareholder and um, he loves him the same as we do. So that's our teaser. Y'all heard the story. If you come on the tours about the teaser, the role of the teaser, make sure the mayors are in season, willing and interested. That's their role. That's, that's option. So I've been trying to tell you about this, what we've been doing just starting yesterday. And that was, so I started about us being a nursery, which means the mayors, we're really, our role is to raise the mayors and foals. Um, just take a second and just enjoy this view, you know? This is our new property. We're standing on our new property now. So we are a nursery. We have about 85 mayors on the farm. And our job is to, for them to become pregnant and then to, to which is a, then an 11 month gestation where they, they grow that foal and then, and then they foal or bore, born it, bore it and um, birth it. And uh, then we raise it and that's our job. The 85 mares, we only own about five to seven of them ourselves. So most of our horses are, are Klein horses. We charge $42 a day board. And that's how we try to make a go of this. You know, this big plant of 900 acres of the 35 employees. And it's a, maybe a break even slightly less, but we make up with it on sales and we just try to make a business of it. And we have now for price being our sixth, and Alice being our sixth, generation um, in the business. So back to yesterday. How am I doing, Alice? You're good. You're so uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> We're worried about the connection. Oh, we are? No, no. I just oh, I'm, I'm not going to go much further than this. Yesterday. 
So those babies are born and they stay with mom for a good five months or so where they're nursing on mom and they they all go through this one barn over yonder way called barn five. And they just be horses. And after about five or six months, we separate them because really they've, they're no longer infants. They're no longer kindergartners. They're just, they're, they're now grade schoolers and they're in the process of quote, growing up and they grow independent and mom's been like, this has been fine, but I'm ready to move on, believe it or not. And so after about five or six months, we, we separate them, call them weaning them. And they, we do that by taking a mare out one at a time, actually two at a time. And they form a smaller herd of just that initial herd that would have been formed as a result of when they were born. After about 14 foals are born, we'll move them to a, a barn, which has a field, and that'll be their location for the next, hmm, you know, five months together as a herd. And then they're weaned, they stay together until yesterday. And what occurred yesterday was what we call moving day, moving day. At that time, we're moving all that herd of weanlings. The, there are actually five different herds of weanlings, about 14 in a group. So about 60, 65 foals. And we're relocating them to the yearling side of the farm, which is a different portion of the farm than where they've been. Uh, and this, this is, an, this is a, an annual occurrence. Every year you will have a, a yearling side and a broodmare and foal side. The yearlings were sold or started their early training back in September. So now the yearling side has been cleared out. So it's open again. So we'll take and we'll relocate these herds into boys and girls and their foaling date. And we'll do it. We're going to have five different herds or five different barns and thus five different fields where they run. Well, as you can see, this was just yesterday. This occurred. They've just been turned out. The guys that you saw driving just went and turned them out. They brought them in at seven this morning into new barns, new herds all together. Had never met these guys before. And look at them. It's like they've been doing this forever. They've just been turned out. And look how calm they are. Look at that. It's amazing. Here's another herd here on the other side. And these are all fillies. And these are fillies that were born in probably March, April. You've got this one here who's kind of a straggler, hadn't quite buddied up. with the others, but it'll find a friend. It'll find a friend. So the next chapter within this story is that now we're on this new land. This is the land that we bought. This was what Calumet bought from my mother's sister, the Green family, bless you. The Green family, and then Calumet bought it. And, um, we were fortunate to buy it from Mr. Kelly uh, back in August or so. And um, you see way yonder, way at the top? Well, that is more land that is still part of Beaumont that is owned by mom's brother, the Price Heatley family, right there. But if you see on this side, right there, right there, where all this tree line is, where the tree line is and things, that portion is part of ours. And if you look really closely, you can see some buildings through there. That's Manowar Boulevard. So that's where you are. And then there's a historic home in there 
right there called the Cave Hill Home. That's not part of the property. That's 17 acres, privately owned. And um, it's a beautiful farm, very historic. I'm sorry, beautiful home, very historic home located within. Right there, you see those lights, kind of? That's Dunbar. That's Dunbar High School. So we've surrounded. We, we used to be in the country, and the country, the city came and visited us over the last 60, 70 years. It was so funny. I tell the story. Granddaddy was involved with um, developing Keeneland back in 1936. And it was suggested that, well, Keeneland will never go because it's too far outside of Lexington. It's six miles, six miles outside of Lexington. And who's going to want to travel six miles to go racing? Because the track that they had before was downtown. And it had gone out of business in 1928. And his idea was if we're going to be the capital and the center of the thoroughbred industry, we need to have a model racetrack. Hold on, I've gotten a day older as of yesterday, so I'm going to attempt to climb this here fence. Hold what you got, boys and girls. I think I'm good, honey. Come on, come on and join, join me if you wish. We're going to go amongst the herd. We don't know if we'll be disconnected. That's the one thing. But we want to allow you to get amongst them. See how they're growing their coats? They're growing their winter coats. Don't they look so healthy? Isn't it fabulous? That yeah, that's an irrigate. That's the Scarlet Love irrigate, the gray. Look at her engine. She's got an engine on her, doesn't she? Can you appreciate? Look at that. Look at that engine. That's a hometown. That's a home. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of ours. That's why we're particularly excited. <laughs> Alistair, be nice. <laughs> Did you see what Alistair uh -huh. said? Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. He is a force. <clears throat> <clears throat> Look at that. Look at that engine, would you? Holy smokes. Looks like an apple. Doesn't it? My lord, that's out of the mare Scarlet Love. All right, y'all, and the other pack is. That's funny face. What was. Fancy face. Fancy face is sister Zia. in the other batch. Zia's in the other batch. And we'll definitely have to say hello to that one. Won't we? Because we need to. We need to make some new friends. We had the pistol. And the pistol was sold. Sold very well. 400 something thousand. Now the loaded pistol. Hannah told him the name. Oh, wow. Is, is that the name? Uh -huh. That's fantastic. A good friend, Alistair Roden, bought the pistol for, a, uh, for some people that are going to race in California. And we've got a half brother to him. He's a big colt out of Intensify. He's a very nice horse. He's a big horse. I can't remember. Man, I'll have to think very hard about who he's by. Um, so this land here is so great. Eddie Kane is a dear friend of mine. He's the manager at Calumet. And they bought this land. He said, you know, Heatley, all these colts that have been winning for Calumet, they came off that land at Mint Lane. We called this Mint Lane. They came off that land. I said, get out of here, Eddie. Don't tell me that. So, we bought it back. What about that? Look at that. Look at that. So, down in the bottom there is what we call barn 12. It needs a little work. And then you come up, the, up above that, and those are our fields. Nope, sorry. The, the, the uh, ones that have been harrowed there are Tony Ocampo's or my uncle's. We're behind that right there, that tree line. And there's a creek down there. It's so exciting. Yeah. So Price is running the day to day. I have handed it over and he is doing an extraordinary job. He's <clears throat> built his team. First thing he does, our daughter, Alice, the one who's here with me, 
she decides she wants to leave Temper Sealy, the corporate world, and start her own consulting. She's in marketing. Start her own consulting company. That's on a Friday. Lo and behold, on a Monday, her first account is Millridge. Our son Price hires Alice as her first account to assist him with Millridge. How do you beat that as a parent? Man. How do you beat that, Alice? Huh? <laughs> it's pretty great. A year, a year ago. Really? Yep. Wow. Oh. Now they're curious. Now we got some curiosity. Who do we think this is? What do you call that kind of hair where it's got all the high, the ends that are all whatever? Ombre? No. Hello. Who are you? You are just around midnight. Well, let me tell you about this one. This one's by Oscar Performance. See all of them now. Look at them. They're all going to come check us out. Even old Apple Fanny there. All of you. I'll let that name stick. <laughs> <laughs> we'll define a name a little. So this one here, just around midnight. Look at you guys. Hello, everybody. See, if we didn't come in the, in the herd, out here with the herd, we wouldn't have had this action. Oh, look, I think we see Creative Grace. We see Tia, Miss Tia, maybe right there. Right there, Al. See if that isn't uh, Creative Grace on her name. Beer, beer oh, Beer Baron Ness. All these champions. Goodness gracious. So just around midnight, the mom is the dam of Duopoly, who's the grade one winner. And um, so that's an Oscar performance out of Just Around Midnight, owned by the Otto family, Jam, Tolly, Audie, Otto. That's her right through there. And she's going to race her. See, we're mostly, mostly commercial breeders amongst us. And so we breed with the intention of selling, but Audie's going to race Just Around Midnight. And this one that Alice is next to is Beer Baroness. She's by Airgate also. And Beer Baroness is owned by the Lynn Schiff family, Clover Hill Farm out of Ohio. And sadly, 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 we lost Lynn Schiff last year. And what a special, special person she is. And her, her daughter Maggie, and her associate Jess, and her husband Jack, and their family have are staying in the business. And in fact, we bought a mare in November. That's part of why we've been so busy with all these sales. But this is an Arrogate filly out of Beer Baroness. Very excited to have her. She is the dam of Rhea Antonia who won the Breeders' Cup, and she's one of our eight Breeders' Cup winners. Well, hello. How you doing? How you doing? Who are you? You look like a purchase that we made, just nice. made. We just bought this one in November as well. We bought eight foals in November. That's the flatter filly that we bought. We paid $90,000 for her. We've got a great partnership um, that we formed with Mr. Strawbridge, George Strawbridge, and Frank Garrison, my dear, dear Frank Garrison from college days, Vanderbilt days. They each own a quarter, and we own a quarter. And then Tia owns an eighth of all these eight. Tia, if you come, and she sometimes offers the tours on the on the Monday and Tuesday to give Hannah a day off. Owns an eighth, and Joe Navarro and Stacia own an eighth. And it's the second year that we've done it. We bought eight eight foals, and we're very very excited about it all. So great to be back with all you guys. Man, we have missed you. We have missed you. But this is our flatter filly. That's it. 
So we're going to do this more on a more routine basis, you know. Price will be back and things, and we'll figure something out. But it all started, again, I said, with in the, during COVID. And Michelle, you were so sweet to reach out during COVID and say what a, and so many of you said what a difference it made for you to be able to have access to be outside. And it was just natural to do to be able to share this extraordinary setting that we have, you know? And these horses. Gosh. So often people just say, I'll stop in and see the tours. And they say, you know, and you can feel it. And they say to you, you know how lucky you are to do what you do. And they remind you. And we thank you for that. Because we love to share. Granddaddy, when he built Keeneland, again with others, it was for the people. This is all for the people to enjoy and get to know the horse. And then, when we were, so with us, we were building that horse country. Price and I played a big role with the build out of horse country because Price would bring friends in from high school. They'd go racing at Keeneland and things and they'd spend time here at the farm and they'd be crazy like high school kids are. When they leave on Sunday, they say, wow, Keeneland is fantastic, the racing, but you know, our favor was just to spend time on the farm. These horses and with this land. And so that's why that's what we do, and that's what that's what led to horse country, and that's what's led to the virtual tours. Isn't this awesome? Isn't this awesome? Can you hear them all, y'all? Huh? <laughs> what? Isn't this awesome? This is the land. Eddie said, Heedley. All those colts, Lexa, Tony, and those horses. It's off that Mint Lane land. And then we said, well, if Mr. Kelly's willing to sell it, we're going to, we took some negotiating. We never, he never budged. We had to come to him. Lord. But anyway, that's the way it is. We're glad to have it. Here's Scarlet Love. I know ladies don't like to show their fanny very often, so, but you got to have a look at that. Huh? Look at that strength. My goodness. Look at the muscle in that. By Arrogate. Sadly, we lost Arrogate way too soon. But we were fortunate, we had, we bred 12 mares to him in his last year, because we believed he stood at Judmont. It was a brilliant horse, earned $17 million racing. And we believed in him. And so now those, those breedings are foals, and you're looking at them, they're weanlings. And as you can see, I think these guys are adapting pretty well in their second day of independence. Of, see, we got rid of the boys. We put all them together. We just put the girls with the girls and the boys with the boys because, you know, we're now heading into junior high. And that's where it all starts. Sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, you know. So we said, well, we're going to, you know. So boys are with boys and girls are with girls and age is with age and all they do is this and run and play. Look at that. What time is it, Addis? How we doing? Huh? 1043. Well guys. It's been so great. It's been so, so great. We started with Oscar. 
We weren't even disconnected, were we? No, no. Huh? Hannah, have we done? We done okay? Weren't disconnected or nothing. It's because Alice is here. If I was on my own, I'd been disconnected, and I would have thrown the iPad out the window, and y'all would have been sitting there looking at the gravel. But instead, look at you. So anyway, we're so happy to have you back. Um, we wish everybody uh, excitement during during the Christmas season and Hanukkah season and just enjoying life to the best of our abilities. We will be back. Price will have a hard time matching this, but I'm sure he will manage in some fashion. It's been great to share with y'all and we will see you next time. We'll let you know via Instagram or through my Twitter uh, when we'll be doing it next, but great to have everybody back and um, everybody take care of themselves. Take care. Bye-bye.